Okay, thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, poverty decomposition by regression. So uh, I think uh, many of you uh, already know what uh, poverty decomposition is, but uh, basically the idea is to uh, attribute observed poverty changes into you know components of interest. So the you know the most sort of uh, popular way is to decompose observed poverty into growth component and redistrib redistribution component, which includes you know uh, uh, that rebellion and uh, other. Uh, decomposition methods. And this provides useful information on the sources of poverty change. Uh, and in this kind of study, most studies basically fix one, fix uh, everything other than one and let one thing change. Okay? So uh, all these you know, um, studies use this uh, move one thing at a time approach and most existing decomposition methods, as a result of this, fail to satisfy what I call time reversion consistency and sub-period sub additivity. So what do these things mean? Well, uh, time reversion consistency basically says the following. Suppose that you travel from t time t0 to t1. You are a time traveler. And then you, you decompose observed poverty into whatever components. You, you know, do the reverse travel in time, and uh, each component has to add up to zero if you go there and come back. Okay? And uh, this uh, requirement seems to be quite natural to me, but uh, these methods do not satisfy. Uh, some period additivity says that if you go from T0 to T2 and T2 to T1 and you do the decomposition, each component must add up. That is, so let's say you look at the growth component. Growth component from T0 to T2 and T2 to T1 must add up to growth component from T0 to T1. And this basic property is, again, failed uh, in most of the existing methods. So uh, in a different paper, I propose a decomposition method uh, based on integration. So if you think about the property of integrals, you know, it's quite uh, easily that you know subperiod additivity and uh, this uh, uh, time reversion consistency is uh, maintained. So I'm going to do something similar, but uh, here I want to develop a method that is based on regression. And uh, this method is potentially useful because we can look at how covariates affect. Poverty. So you may be interested in the impact of policy or changes in education level uh, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, here I consider a general class of additively decomposable measure, including you know, FGT measure, Watts measure, Chakravati measure, and so forth. Um, but uh, for the sake of you know, simple simplicity of the presentation, uh, I focus on poverty gap. But in the paper, uh, I pretty much deal with a very general class of additively decomposable measures. So I'm not going to show you uh, many equations. Instead, I do a very graphical presentation. So let's say you have uh, covariates on the horizontal axis. Uh, on the vertical axis, you have consumption per capita. Uh, the red line is the poverty line. And let's say that this line represents the relationship between covariate and, uh, let's say, consumption per capita. Now, suppose that this is the initial x and y. And uh, poverty gap in this graph is represented by this uh, distance. Yeah? So pg0 means that the poverty gap in the initial period. Now, suppose that x increases, y also increases, poverty gap also increases. And here, I assume that this line is fixed. Okay? So I'm dealing with an obvious case. Huh? The gap ah, sorry, decreases. Yeah, sorry. Poverty gap decreases. Okay? Um, so in this case, you know, the change is completely due to the change in x. So this is a very obvious case, nothing, but this is an instructive uh, case. So let's think about the case where actually this line changes. Suppose that 
the line changes from here to here. Okay? Poverty gap decreases from PG0 to PG1. How can we decompose this thing? Okay? So we can think of certain scenarios. Suppose that X changes first and B changes second. Okay, under this assumption, we are basically thinking about this trajectory. You fix B first, and uh, let X change, and then B changes. If you think about uh, a decomposition like that, then this is a change due to, sorry. This part is the change in PG due to X, and this part is the change in PG due to the slope coefficient. Of course, you can change the sequence of the change in B and X. Suppose that B changes first, then this is the change in poverty gap due to the change in slope, and this part is the change in poverty gap due to the change in X. So if you do this decomposition, X component is larger and B component is smaller. Okay? So what this clearly shows is that both components depend on the path of change. So without additional information, to me, you know, a smoother path, instead of just going like this or going like this, would be uh, more appropriate and perhaps not like, uh, like this. Okay, so what would be the reasonable path to think? Okay, so here we are going to make this assumption. So X is linearly changes and B linearly changes. If you have additional data, you can uh, calibrate this, but I think this is more reasonable than assuming that X changes first and B changes second, or B changes first and X changes second. And uh, under this assumption, um, actually the change is quadratic. If I just show, have shown this picture, you might have thought that you know, linear change is reasonable, but it's not. The reason is that if the slope is going up, you would expect that you know, y, would be changing, y would be changing faster towards the end of the time period if you believe that x also changes linearly. Now, uh, under this assumption, uh, you can calculate the contribution of uh, B and X. Uh, this is a very simple uh, algebra. So let's see how you know, these you know, uh, formula relate to the graph that I have shown earlier. So actually, uh, under the assumptions that I have shown, um, the change will be like this. Okay? And um, X half is a uh, value of x at time, at time you know, t equals 0 0.5. And this level of y is actually smaller than the average of y0 and y1 okay? in, in this graph. Okay? That's not generally true, but uh, under the assumptions that are shown there, uh, this is true. Okay? Now, suppose that this dashed line is a line that has the same intercept, but uh, coefficient of the average of B0 and B1, you can, let's say, and this, this one obviously goes through X half and Y half, push it down, okay? And then you have a parallelogram here. In this picture, you can see that this is a component, X component, and this is a B component. So what does this mean exactly? Well, this distance is the X1 minus X0 times half of uh, average of B0 and B1. Okay, so that's the X component. And this distance is equal to this distance Okay, which is just a change in um, <clears throat> y due to uh, the change in slope at the middle. Okay, so this is how it relates. 
Now here so far I have I have completely ignored the existence of residual. Okay, so I have been looking at a particular person, but usually, you know, when you have a real data, you don't have a you know exact line like this. Okay, if you fit the line, you know, there will be an error. So how do we deal with it? Okay, so again, I can deal with it in a similar way. I assume that uh, error changes linearly, and with this, uh, I can actually decompose into the changes in you know, different components, including the intercept, slope, change in covariate, and uh, error term. And here, you know, the covariates uh, do not have to be just one variable. It can be, there can be you know, many variables. Now, one you know, question you might have is that uh, wh what do you do if you have poverty rate? Okay? It's discrete. So it doesn't have all the nice properties. So um, I'm still sort of experimenting, but uh, one, one thing that I'm doing right now is to you know, use uh, expected poverty. I just run regression and uh, look at the poverty, uh, expected poverty rate as opposed to observed poverty status. Okay, so now let me move on to the application part. So I apply uh, this method to Côte d'Ivoire and Tanzania. For Côte d'Ivoire, I use uh, uh, CILSS, um, uh, Côte d'Ivoire Living Standards Survey for 95, 85, sorry, 86, 87, and 88. This is a rotating panel. Uh, so 85, half of the observations in 85 and 86 uh, is a panel. Half of the observations uh, in 86 and 7 is panel and so forth. Um, and um, uh, in Tanzania, uh, I use uh, Tanzania National Panel Survey uh, for 2089 and 2010-11. And I use uh, uh, households that didn't split up or do not have missing data for our purpose. And uh, um, in the earlier version, I used everything, but I, I decided to focus on rural areas. So the number of observations are actually smaller than, than these. Okay, so here are the results for Côte d'Ivoire. How, how do you look at this? So uh, this is, uh, say, let's look at this. So this is a distance to uh, the closest market. So because of the change in X, uh, poverty gap, has uh, decreased by 0 0.39 percentage points. Uh, you also have this P component because the slope is also allowed to change. So 0 0.71 percentage points increase in poverty gap due to the sort of structural change. Um, so I have all these things, and the constant is of course zero by definition because you know X doesn't change. And uh, so this part is the part that can be explained by this decomposition. But of course, because of the presence of the epsilon term, uh, I have this part that is due to residual. So if this part is very big, um, this, this is not, uh, decomposition is not very useful. So unfortunately for the years 85 to six, the decomposition is not particularly you know, informative. But uh, for other years, um, it, um, you know, the covariates can capture the changes in poverty you know, in, a, in a reasonable way. And uh, between 87 and 88 in particular, uh, we find that uh, the change in the you know, distance to market has uh, helped to mitigate the actual poverty increase that was observed. Uh, this is the case, this is the result for Tanzania. So the decomposition uh, works well because the residual term is really small here compared with the observed change. And I, I, I think this is a good example of sort of agricultural development here. So people are exiting from agriculture, uh, which contributes to poverty reduction. And also, the gap between you know, uh, non-agriculture and agricultural sector has uh, diminished. So as a result, you know, there is a, a total of 1.07 percentage point reduction in poverty due to uh, the change in agricultural households uh, status. OK, so I may be going a bit too fast, actually. And during the study period, um, 
market access uh, didn't uh, um, affect poverty much. Okay, so here I look at distance to the market, uh, and uh, this really had a very small impact on poverty. So, so your market access? Distance, yeah. This, uh, sorry, this is in kilometers, sorry. So this is the distance of the village that the household is located to the closest market. And it can be zero if the market exists within the village. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I developed a method of uh, property decomposition based on regression. And uh, this method satisfies uh, time reversion, consistency, and sub-period additivity. And uh, you can think of it as a sort of, you know, uh, Oaxaca blinder kind of decomposition uh, applied to poverty. Although it's not exactly that, but it has a flavor of that because they have a regression model. And I want to argue that uh, this method uh, is complementary to, you know, uh, randomized control trials because this can be applied ex post. You know, so long as you have data, you know, you don't have to um, design experiments ex ante, and this is much cheaper than obviously running, you know, a randomized co control trials. So if you want to assess policy, if you have a policy variable at the household level, you can do this decomposition and see the contribution of policy to poverty change. Uh, this decomposition analysis may help researchers and policymakers to understand the important sources of poverty change. Now, as you may have noticed, you know, this is done for panel surveys. And uh, uh, I have tried cross-sectional models. Uh, I, I can you know, make much stronger assumptions and do a decomposition, but uh, so far I haven't been really you know, successful in getting uh, compelling results. So I, at least for this version, confine myself to the uh, panel model. Okay? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, so um, I guess, you know, the application part is, uh, uh, can be improved. Uh, I guess the, the data is, you know, because the panel, uh, the time lag between the panel is a bit short, which means that many of the axes actually don't change. So I, I thought about a lot, lot of candidates. So if you have, you know, if you know of any data that uh, is more appropriate for this kind of method, I would uh, love to know. I, I really much, uh, very much uh, uh, appreciate your inputs uh, for the ideas of, you know, better application. I'm not... Uh, trying to sell that this is the best application that I can think of. Okay, thank you very much.